After adding a resource record, the next step in serials is to set up a serial component. A component allows you to set up a prediction pattern as well as a frequency pattern. So from the details screen of the resource, click the Add Serial Component option at the top of the screen. Enter a description. This is descriptions for internal use only, so only staff, library staff will see this. I say 12 issues a year. Leave it as leave primary ticked. The next step is issue template. Issue template allows you to set up a formula or a pattern for how each issue will look as they're predicted. The options you have for setting up a pattern or a template are volume, issue, date, season and year. For geographical it has the month name and the year. So we're going to choose date for this. When you choose date it puts the letters percent and D on the screen. This means this is where the date will be displayed. There's some examples of how date templates are set up displayed underneath the template on the screen here. To format a date, click the date option first, which is what we've done. Then using little d's, capital M's and small y's, format how you'd like the date to look or how you'd like each issue to look. We're going to use four capital M's. This represents the, the month as a full month. And there's some descriptions of these, again, in the text underneath the issue template. Then we'll put a space and four small y's. To finish the formatting of the, the date, click the date button again. There's no need to put actual values in your template, just the formula for, for where the values will appear. In the case of geographical, it doesn't have any volume or issue information, so we'll leave this information out. Next, we need to set up a group template. A group, te group template describes how the groups of issues will be grouped together. For example, would you like all the issues grouped together by year or grouped together, together by their volume? In this case, we'll choose year. So if we click the year button, it displays percent Y. This means if I receive a 2017 issue, it will group it underneath 2017. If I receive a different year, for example 2015, it will create a new group uh, called 2015 and put the issue under there accordingly. Issues per volume. This is only used if you use volume and issues information in your issue description. In the case of the geographical magazine, it doesn't have issues or volume information, so we'll simply leave that as one. Continuous also relates to issues and volume numbers. Uh, this determines if the issue number gets reset every time the volume changes. In the case of uh, geographical, we can leave continuous empty because there's no issue numbers involved. The next step is to determine the first issue that we plan to receive. In the case of volume and issue, we can leave all these as one because there's no volume or issue information uh, needed in our issue description. Otherwise, you'd enter the first volume information of the issue you're receiving, followed by the actual issue of the issue you're receiving, and first issue is the first issue that arrives in the volume that you're receiving. For this example, we'll label these as one. Finally, enter the date of the first issue you plan to receive. This can be done by using the calendar button. I'm going to receive some back issues, so I'm going to choose January the 1st, 2017. For issues which are monthly, the actual date isn't important, so the first of the month is a good idea to use. If there's specific dates for specific issues, uh, this often happens for weekly type um, per periodicals, you need to put the exact date in. In this case, we'll just leave it as the first. The next step is to determine how many issues there are a year. This is 12 issues a year, so we'll type in 12. Once you've done this, click Go. Once you've clicked Go, at the bottom of the screen, if you scroll down a little, you can see in the Check Components area what the issues will look like. And you can see July, or September, October, etc. Something to note here is even though I want to receive all the issues uh, back to the 1st of January, it's only showing issues from July onwards. 
And the reason for that is because uh, the July issue is the next issue that's expected. So you can put whatever uh, date you like as a starting date, but it'll just show you from today's date onwards. If you need to make any adjustments because the predicted issues don't look quite right, you can go back to the top of the screen and make some adjustments in your issue template. If necessary, you could change the volume and issue information and the start date, as well as the issues per year, to, to make the issues predict as you expect. Finally, there's an option for contents page. If you've got a copy of the contents page available, uh, possibly you might scan the contents page and save it as a PDF file, you could tick Add Contents Page. By ticking Add Contents Page, it means during the check-in process of receiving issues, you'll be prompted to uh, select that file name. What this means is when users receive notifications of new issues, they can get a copy of that contents page sent to them automatically via email. Also, when users find this record in the search screen, they can actually view the contents page at any time. Click the Save button once you've entered the details.